welcome to an extra special episode issue of Hobby Hammer today. I'm joined as ever by the brilliant Miles David. Say hello, Miles David. What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> uh, is that a, a new greeting from your part? I'm not feeling too great today. You know, we've been talking about this at nauseum before the show. Like, I'm not feeling too great. I know we've been kind of talking at each other and coughing. So I wanted to bring some level of enthusiasm to the opening to kind of mask the limp performance that I'm going to give throughout the show. <laughs> right, so that, that's what it is. It's all downhill from here. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's not pretty much, yeah. Lower your expectations. Well, I suppose we're both post-30 and it's it's just all just downwards. But anyway, we're going to try and arrest that yes. decay of our lives <laughs> and go over actually quite a good topic. Uh, yeah, we decided, let's talk about something fun today. Um, our original topic, we're both not feeling really up to, but yeah, let's just talk about something fun and controversial. So we will be ranking the Primarchs. Now, criteria. We haven't really talked about this because we wanted to, I guess, ambush each other with this. So criteria yeah, yeah, yeah. What What is the criterion for marking these Primarchs, Max? I'm going to start out with one that I think you won't agree with. No paint jobs to be included in what you think of the model. Because it's sculpt and character. Sculpt of... only. But can we add that? a caveat to that? Um, how nice... Okay, perhaps there's only a few people in the world who are able to do this, but how nice the miniature feels to paint. Okay, okay, I can I can go for that. I can like go for some that. words have a, like a nice ma- nice. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. It's, it's not the result of them. the paint job, but the actual yes paintability. Yeah. like we were saying about that exactly. damsel that I painted. I'm going to hold exactly. Up the damsel. It's Gorgeous really miniature. nice. Just to a paint. really nice. It is just a really nice miniature. You, you can't really put into words why with, with that damsel. It just feels like it's just a very nice miniature to paint. Uh, so yes, I would add that caveat in there. Yeah, no, no I'm happy for that. It's, it's the spirit. What I didn't want is us to be looking at golden demon models and going, this one a golden yeah. demon, therefore it is uh-huh. S tier, and uh-huh. this didn't win one, so therefore the Primark sculpt is rubbish. That's why, do you know, like that? That's not a marker of a a good sculpt for me. Is yep. if that I'm, model I'm has inspired a great painter. Okay, so that's rule number one. Rule number... Do you want to go with rule number two? That we've not rule discussed, so you ambush me with your rule? Oh, my God. Okay, so rule number two. Um, I think law is important, but it shouldn't be an overriding deciding factor. Again, it is sculpt, sculpt alone with a with a twist of law. So how well has the law been represented on the miniature? By that, do you mean, like, Perturabo is represented with a sword in a couple of books, he doesn't have a sword yep. on the model, we don't care about that. Or why doesn't Ferris Manus have a massive spanner yeah, in right. his hand? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so how, how well is the law represented in the miniature? With the caveat that he's not absolute. Yes. <laughs> so we've had, we've had two ambushed rules both with caveats <laughs> so it's yes okay number three should we mark down our third law I, 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 do you know what i'm no i think that's it i think we've we've covered the basis what do we do in a case of an impasse um uh i'll meet you in a tesco car park and we'll fist fight it out <laughs> uh, well we we meet in at the at Warhammer World yeah, on the 17th. Yeah, so we we'll... meet up on the 17th, and you've got previous for getting chucked out of Warhammer World for fisticuffs, so we'll... <laughs> history repeats itself. That, that is a, a misrepresentation of me, sir. I'm sure it is. Should we get into the segment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's do it. I've actually character assassinated you, then bounced out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's... And I can't tell you you're completely wrong, because I did. It was I got cut off from the bar, and we're talking ten years ago now. I got cut yep. off from the bar, and it wasn't me. I wasn't the aggressor. Mm. But like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I just feel felt the need to defend myself slightly. 
<laughs> right. Yep. First Primark that we're going to go with. And most of, most of these, if not all, are going to be painted by Miles. We've got a hard time limit of the actual episode yep. of in about an hour and a quarter from now. So if it's not mm -hmm. going to look like we finished, we're going to split it up into two. And we're just going to pick up where we left off in next mm -hmm. episode. Just so it doesn't catch anyone out halfway through. Mm -hmm. First one, Vulcan. Vulcan, right. Really underrated sculpt, I feel. Um, and it's one that's not really often talked about as being sort of like upper echelon S tier. It is... Uh, I, I guess we're going to be shifting these guys around as we decide on where they yeah, finally yeah. settle in the pecking order. Uh, great details, very representative of who he is, like a stoic pose, yet dramatic. So it not only fulfills that function of being a, a sort of like ceremonial piece, like you get a lot of Primarchs in very static poses, which are a little bit more ceremonial in nature. He also has, like, he also looks like he can throw down as well with a hammer. Uh, well proportioned, big dude. Just overall, one of the strongest sculpts in the lineup for me. Uh, how about you, Max? What what were your feelings on Vulcan? I really like the Vulcan sculpt. Like the mm. the hammers, great hammer. The the cape. I, and this is going to be weird that I have oh, that harp on the cape straight away. Stand. I reckon it's yeah. the best cape that they have on any of the Primark models potentially. It's my it's my favourite with its little details. I can't disagree. He's, we, I can't disagree. One thing to say as we go through these, we reserve the right to change our opinion at any time, because I imagine mm -hmm. we will do that a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. And I, and as Miles said, we can we're gonna. I reckon we go through them, and then at the end we have a final like, are we unhappy or happy with any of their places? And we have like a mm -hmm. couple that we yeah. can just shuffle about. Yeah, but yeah, I reckon it's one of the best capes. It's the most characterful cape. It, it, mm. Even if it's not got, say, like Horus's flow to the side, mm -hmm. it's got the little details of like the the root, the nocturnian nocturnian mm. runes mm -hmm. on the mm. inside there that you can just on the see. inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just textured. Here. Yeah, the texture is unbelievable. The flow of it, it frames the miniature without overwhelming it. Uh, his iron halo that's set on flame, uh, the flame mm. motif running throughout the miniature. It's a very heavily detailed miniature, but it doesn't feel clustered. Now, I really like the pose and the balance of mm. it. Mm -hmm. Just a slight drawback of it is that the hand is a bit... And even the arm, I don't think it's where... Because obviously the hand is a separate piece to the arm for anyone that's mm. not bu built Vulcan. The, mm -hmm. the left hand is separate than the arm. So I'm not saying how Miles has built it, mm. but the actual arm and hand seem too far cocked round, almost as it, on the model as it is meant to be built, almost as if it's meant to be shielding someone. And it's, it, I think he's actually oh, like powering right. up for a hammer strike, and then it's a bit too yeah. far cocked round to me, to my eye at least, mm -hmm. and when I've built it. It's almost like he should be shielding someone, but then there is mi a missing model or part of that diorama. Right. And he's maybe should be tilted too far around. And, and, and we've got to find most of these Primark models are excellent, excellent models. So what we're going to end up doing mm. is looking for slight... Nitpicking. Yeah, nitpicking, essentially, to figure out some sort of order in where we like them. Mm. <laughs> Because there there's only a couple that I don't like and think are, are truly bad models. So uh, so what are we thinking? Yeah. What are we thinking straight away? I, I'm thinking A slash S tier. A slash S? Uh, a slash S, oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't argue strong... on you if you were saying A. If if you if you agreed with A, we don't we don't have to have a big argument. I think pop I think... it in A and it might shift. Oh, we should actually talk about the a the a the the, the actual structure of the S tier. So S, S tier for Sigismund. Yeah. Uh, then right at the base, E, E tier for Erebus. Yeah. And we've got A. Well, we've got S at the top. Then A for Ariman, a learned scholar, but not quite the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And D. But what are we what we're we gonna get, uh, assign to D Miles because we didn't talk about this. 
Dantioch. Dantioch. <laughs> yeah. Dantioch is the worst. He, can we put D at the bottom? His um, name starts with D, though. So... <laughs> yeah, but can we not put D at the bottom? He's the worst. No, Erebus Legion is way traitor. worse than Dantioch. Legion Why traitor. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> we have very limited time to deal with this. Dantioch goes in D, E for Erebus. Fine, but Let's I just want on. my protest known that Dantioch is a horrible Legion traitor and he's potentially the worst fucking... The worst Astartes in the galaxy. Right, so that's Who's Vulcan first, A. Perturabo. A. Ooh, Perty, 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 Perturabo. Um, so we do have the image up of the uh, Golden Demon winner. Yep. Yeah. Uh... Oh, no, 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 we've got, we've got yours, you fool. Oh, we've got mine? Okay. Yeah. So, not, not the, I fully admit, not the best paint jobs. Uh, <laughs> and also not a Golden Demon winner. <laughs> and also to, not a Golden Demon winner. Yeah, so this piece, yeah, was painted when he first came out. And, you know, when you look back at your old work and you kind of cringe a little bit, like, oh, God, I could do so much better now. It's the same with this paint job. Like, I could just do so much more with this piece. Anyway, uh, okay. Ooh, this is a difficult one because the detail, uh, Max, you should take the lead on this discussion because you're like Mr. Iron Warrior fan. Right, right. I, well, I am. I am. Yeah. I, I actually think this sculpt is excellent. The head mm -hmm. has a lot of character and he's yep. perfect for how he's portrayed in the lore. Like with the cables, yep. the, the face isn't... He's not a beautiful face. But, then it, but in saying that, it's not a terrible sculpt is what I'm saying. It's a mm -hmm. well sculpted, non beautiful face. Mm -hmm. I think the armor is excellent, has good in visual interest there. Like from the studs on the inside of the leg, providing it like a bit of shine to the different highlights to what you can do on the inside mm -hmm. leg. When you've got, say, like a dark non metallic metal or dark metal, mm -hmm. it can ha have good highlights on the studs. The brasses that can be around, along with, you can't see it in this picture, <clears throat> but having the hazard stripes on the outside of the leg along with opportunities to get them in there tastefully rather than it just mm. being like iron warriors character hazard stripes everywhere which is just yep. not not the way to do it for anyone that is doing that please stop but <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah he's i think he's ta really tastefully done he's a strong pose like a a real well put together sort of aesthetically pleasing with good flow across the pose with the the right foot back mm. and then the left the, the foot feels extended. like extended so the left it feels like extended. there's a butt it feels like there's a butt at the end of this well god you give the butt because I, I i just don't think it has the crowning glory of some of the other primarchs that we see it doesn't have the gravitas of a character like this uh, i think the problem is it might be it's an action pose Whereas when you think of this Primark, he's almost like a dreadnought, right? He's big, he's indomitable. And then when you have those legs too far, like really wide, far apart, uh, it puts him more in the realms of sort of like a more a mobile character, maybe more like a Fulgrim or Jakarta Khan. Whereas I think this guy should be more in like a Dawn-esque pose, stomping forward indomitably. Um, I have a bit of a bugbear with dreadnoughts being posed too dramatically, where they're kind of like running forward or sprinting or like doing a backflip through there because they're a big piece of industrial weaponry. Mm. They they simply don't they they haven't got the power to pull off those uh, acrobatic uh, agile acrobatic uh, uh, things. Yeah, uh, so I would have I I've seen reposes of this Primark done where it's kind of like holding a marine up in the air and it's more static and i feel like it works better that way the the components of the sculpt are great i really like what he's done with ferris manis's uh uh hammer um yeah because there's additional plates the... strapped on isn't there to... yeah exactly to make it to to, to get rid of the gilding mm -hmm. yeah uh, the base is great i love the concept of the base it's just Stupid. i don't think the the pose works. Yeah. Oh, oh, I yeah. thought you were going to continue on into the base there, so I interjected. No, I, I disagree really like with you on the base. The base is stupid and daft. Like, right. it's, it's out of all the Primarchs, we have Primarchs actually in settings, like as uh -huh. part yeah. of the environment. Right. Okay. And then Perturabo yeah. 
because this is my this is actually my main drawback. The, uh -huh. the pose, I think, I like the extension of like of the left arm, the rear foot back, mm -hmm. or the right foot back. The left foot, I think, is overextended into. Mm. Do you remember like set like Mark Seven attack Marines, like tactical Marines, where they've always yeah. got these really wide samurai style poses. Uh -huh. You yes. know, like when you, yep. you see in an anime, he's uh -huh. he's almost got that where it's too far. In one foot up, one foot back, brilliant pose. Mm -hmm. And it, this requires a repose, so we can't. This can't be taken in, and is a negative mm -hmm. in that it requires it. Just pulling that foot back just a little bit more, as you say, to make it not look so wide, I think mm -hmm. is makes it much better. So therefore, I agree mm -hmm. with you on that. The base, it's, it's big, high, out of the environment. When do we yeah. ever hear about Perturabo like smashing part nights? Like it's, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't add any. It's like they would like, hmm, what have we got on our random desk over there? Oh, right, smashing, yeah. smashing the night. We've got a miscast of a night that we can just sculpt on. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I guess I, I like the <clears throat> the base. If you take it away from this miniature and maybe had it as his own like piece, like I I I, I loved painting just the bash that destroyed night. But yeah, hundred percent agree. It doesn't add anything to the law. It doesn't add anything to the miniature. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't frame the miniature like other bases do. Say like Gilliman's base frames mm -hmm. the miniature. With this, yeah, he just he popped like on top of the scene, completely out of context. Ah. Uh, Lot, I guess we could summarize this as lots of good components that don't work together. Uh, uh, it's been painful. Painful. Um, Ooh, where, where you where see, we I, I really like the actual model, except for that overextension in the base. Right. I I think there are much weaker Primarchs than Perturabo. Ooh, okay, so not E tier then. I, I'd... No, I low A, high D, for me. No, yeah, oh, um, D, D, I'd say. D, slot into. Well, D. let's see. Let's see. What I'm happy to put it high D because that gives me the ability to uh, argue move it things to around. Alter the end. We can move things yeah. around. I guess We're... another thing we should say is that one pri at least one Primark needs to occupy each one of these positions as well, and ideally four of them should be occupying each tier to separate them out slightly. But yeah, D. Let's whack him in D. So we've got an A, we've got a D. <laughs> right. Okay. And we all know now that I'll be gunning hard for Sanguinius since you've smashed Sanguinius, my Primark yeah. down into D. Oh, and there's a lot There's a lot to gouge out of that as well. <laughs> it's almost on the same vein as why I don't want an Iron Warrior's Praetor, I think is the... <laughs> it's never going to live up to your expectation. Yeah. We've got Martarian next. Mortarian, okay. Uh, ooh, gosh, what to say about Mortarian? Now, uh, this has got less of an overextended, but it's got the same sort of motion within its pose, like it's mm. sweeping, it's harvesting souls, as mm -hmm. is Mortarian's way, with yeah. his scythe. It fits that Grim Reaper, and also mm -hmm. like a bit of a realistic way of using a scythe, potentially, without ever having used a scythe, I'm going to say. i going to commit to that <laughs> statement. Uh. The, yeah. the the legs aren't overextended, but there is a lot of movement mm. within it. Mm. The cape adds to that. Yeah. And do you know that and really flows with it? It's got the character of the backpack having those exhaust vents, I think is really, really cool. Looks looks mm. like archaic and mm. machine built in a and it's like almost steampunky without being steampunk. Do you know like it's yeah. it's that sort of vibe. <laughs> What do you, what do you think about it, Miles? I, I really like the sculpt. I'm, I'm just trying to, I guess, summarize my thought. I, I'm trying to remember uh, painting it. Uh, it again, it's, it, it has that weird ability to both be very highly detailed, but have lots of negative space to put the weathering. So mm. on the legs, on the cloak, lots and lots of just negative dead space for you to fill in as an artist. And I think the weathering benefits from such a large surface it is uh, one of the larger primarchs so you can get away with quite a lot of weathering like that uh the face i'm a big 
face enjoyer of this sculpt. Uh, it's the, the cuts in the skin are, are very harsh. It's thin, gaunt, emaciated. The individual teeth have been sculpted to make it seem... Uh, so when you sculpt teeth like this, it almost seems like they're uh, 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 like not well-maintained. Whereas if you have just like a flat line for a line of teeth, mm. because of the scale of it, when you zoom out, it, it just gives the, the impression of it being sort of like enamel teeth. But actually sculpting individual teeth makes them seem like... Uh, not well maintained. Oof, overall, where to place this? Um, no, I think the paintability is a big one for Mortari. Paintability, Actually, yeah, yeah. I think we for, I completely forgot about including paintability in the previous two. Um, but so with we can come back with, to with, that. But I think it's, it's I guess, really yeah, big with the other two, in Mortari. Yeah, with the other two, I don't think there's really much to say about them. They, they, you, you paint them, they function, they are nice to paint. I, I like miniatures. I disagree. We can go back oh, to it. Right. We can go back to it. Uh, we can leave that on the okay on the table. But I think yeah, you're right with the paintability. It should definitely go up with Mortarian. Yeah, it's it's a nice miniature to paint. You can do lots of things with it. You can weather it. You can realistically chip it. There's a lot of things to do with this miniature. Oh. Now, in terms of, oh, go on, go, go ahead. On. No, no, no you, uh, he's a hard I'm one to talk to about. Sits. I think. Yeah. Uh, um, the base is uninspired. Yeah, yeah. The base is industrial, uh, and it does feel like okay. What do we have lying around? Yep. Let's yeah, just another, whack him on that. It's another one of them. Yeah. Shall we just go for a? Piece. Shall we just go for a ranking? See if we align. Thinking high D. I was thinking low A, but yeah, somewhere around yeah, that region. Some, uh, somewhere high around a. there. High, high, because the base lets it down. Do you mean high D? High, high, high D. Yeah, yeah, high D, low A. Right. Yeah, uh, let's, let's put do it high there. D. Yeah, it's just the base. The base lets it down, unfortunately. Whereas Vulcan's base, I think, uh, again, I don't think it really informs much of the character of Vulcan. Um, what if phase? he would have been. Yeah, if you'd have been saving that miniature, like that off-camera miniature, I think it would have been informed. It's it's just a bunch of dead marines on a, on a base. It's a cool base. It's an amazing base. Mm. But what does it tell you about Vulcan the Primarch? Ooh, Ooh. yeah, mm. yeah. Let's let's talk about this in the yes, in the summary talk, yes. that will be either the end of today <clears throat> or next one. Yeah, right. And and if D gets too cramped, we're gonna have to. Butted. Yeah, we're gonna to have to have us. Okay. Next. Oh, we have to move some into E, maybe. Oof. Russ. Oh, right. I know the pose is a little bit. Uh, it's not loved in the community, but um, so if you put the miniature in profile, it kind of looks like the outline of a wolf because you have the head of the wolf, and, the, and it it sort of looks like it's it's loping mm. forward. And that was the, I guess, uh, philosophy behind this miniature. I, do um, you know what? I, just... I didn't have a clue that was where that yeah. was going to go. I never knew, knew that little fact. <laughs> oh, no, the great thing is, because the, the open weekenders, you could actually talk to the sculptors. So mm. I chatted to Sam about this, and that was what he was trying to get across. Like, he he's not running forward like a human being. He's low to the ground. He's almost like loping forward. Yeah. And the wolf uh, backpack there gives it the sort of silhouette of, of a wolf bounding forward. Um, at this time, uh, he's... Uh, so Alan Bly had a really unusual phrase for this, that the Russ represented here at Prospero, he is at the apotheosis of his power. So this is the most powerful version of Russ mm. at, a, at this time. And... The sculptor wanted to uh, get across that sense of bounding forward, that energy, the 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 dynamism, the unchecked dynamism of this character. Yeah. A lot of people, like almost like he is a uh, a force of nature rather than uh, anything humanoid. But uh, okay, apart from being very enthused about talking to the sculptor about the project and 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 let uh, actually look at the miniature. <clears throat> well. Tons of gorgeous, gorgeous little details. Tons of gorgeous little script and room work. Yeah, yeah, like the the crisscross of not work on the like that cut into the armor, as well as ha having the yeah sort of like the extruded not work 
as well. Uh huh. Yeah. I think he just really nice details, the overlapping plates, studs allowing for a bit a bit of interest on flat plates whilst also not taking away from that sort of as you said, negative space on Mortarion. It might not yeah. be the full flat plate, mm -hmm. but it's very, do you know, it's very close to allow like a blend across a plate mm -hmm. whilst yeah. also having a yeah. spike of interest on there. Mm -hmm. I think on the, on the note of the actual pose, just before we completely go off it, I'm going to pull yeah. up the, the Magnus versus Russ uh, diorama. Yeah. And it's it's like so. It's, this is a back shot that you've actually sent me of Russ mm -hmm. versus Magnus, but the way that that ties into the entire piece, mm -hmm. I, I think, is a bit lost when you get the single model. But when it's put together as a display piece, agreed. It yeah. really it just shatters all sort of doubt over that pose. Yes. So are we are we going to talk about it in singular? Or are we going to talk about the it in it's or are we going to rate to... it in singular or tandem? I think we should rate it singular because if people didn't weren't interested in buying the diorama or interested in anything else, I think it has to live and die by its own merits. But mm. we have to at least include the discussion or have some kind of consideration for it as a full scene. Um, but as a singular piece, yeah, he he has all those like weird totemic marks, uh, the teeth, the uh, sort of like Viking esque fetishes that. Mm. Uh, ward him against evil. Uh, the 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 face of the sculpt is also very characterful. Uh, he has the those little fangs. He has the little sideburns on the side. Uh, the hair has this sort of uh, Achilles esque, Brad Pitt esque flow to it from. Uh, um, oh God, what what uh, Troy. The, the, the Iliad Troy from Troy? Yeah, from Troy. Uh, the detailing of the sword is out of this world. I'd love to... It's a wonder that more Chaos Lords haven't used this as to represent demon weapons. <laughs> and yeah. another great detail as well is the wolf on the head of the axes and how on the flip side there you have uh, a wolf eating the sun, uh, you know, representative of a thousand suns. I, I, yeah. the, the miniature is just bedecked with these sublime little details like that. Yeah, and I think that's one, it's not to an extent, say, of like, Khan, the 40k Khan always popped into my head when <clears> people <throat> say about miniatures having too much stuff on them. I don't know whether there's <clears> worse <throat> examples than that now, but that's the one that sort of like has stuck with me. And <clears> it's <throat> not to that extent, but <clears throat> it's tastefully done busy detail that I think the scale helps of Russ as well yeah the, the scale helps because the Sam he's, he's such a good sculptor he's able to render like all these busy details in such a small minute level that even though yes there is a lot of detail on these miniatures it doesn't feel over fussy it 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 feels in context with everything else that sits on the miniature mm. yeah agreed the last point I think if we if we at some point are gonna wrap this up. I think the armor the actual armor choice you get some prime marks that are sort of elegant flowing armor, mm. like yep. sang sanguineous, mm -hmm. and some prime marks that have more archaic suits of armor. And I think mm. they've done really well on Russ to have an archaic suit of armor mm -hmm. that also looks good. Because this there's some that are swings and misses for me. It, it has sort of blocking. like that noble, savage aesthetic mm. to it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, it divides, it, it, it travels along that line between being archaic and barbaric and uh, uh, civilized at the same time. Uh, okay, drawbacks. Should we talk about drawbacks? Yeah. I don't like the cloak. Really? Uh, it, it, it's just a flat well, almost a flat piece of resin that's sort of like straight out. I would have liked more flow to it. So when you look at other fur cloaks like uh, horses, for example, uh, it has like this bunched feeling yeah. to it. Uh, whereas with this, it, it's just too straight. It's too inorganic. It's not flowing around the miniature. It seems to be almost not... tacked on as an afterthought from the two points uh, it... that attach yeah. underneath the, the backpack. 
Yes. It's then just yeah, flat on exactly. it. And it's just, I, I it's never just like flat. that aesthetic for cloaks, actually, where it's like just tacked on either side of the backpack. Even though it doesn't yeah. make sense to have like a full cloak underneath the backpack. Yeah. It it sort of feels nicer as a sculpt and as a, like, mm. just that's more aesthetic. And just a paint as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you on uh, that there. Any drawbacks for you? In, if, since we're taking it in singular, the pose uh -huh. okay, yeah. is overextended. I think he's overextended. Yep. The head position that it sort of forces you into mm -hmm. looks really unnatural. Like never, I don't mind the like sort of the axe being swung out backwards. I don't mind mm -hmm. the sword being across the body, or the the legs look slightly weird in the running pose mm -hmm. that they're in, yeah. and the head mm -hmm. is a bit too turned for me. Mm. It's it's got the sort of aesthetic flow that you want to see. In that, a lot of times in sculpting, you want, and this is just in general, not just model sculpting, or even just I was speaking to a friend that does movement classes mm. as like an art form, and you want things to be at the end of their action, so like a complete extension. Ah. You never want something okay. to be halfway through. Russ right. does that okay. really well. But yeah. then it's almost pushed a bit too far on the face sure. or the leg, and that's what makes it feel unnatural, is that it's hyper-extended. Sure. Um, so I, I think slightly that comes in a negative for me since we're taking it as a single model. I do really like yeah. the base. Like, on this as a base. single model, the base is really nice. Yep. Gives some kind of context to the miniature, adds to it, doesn't overwhelm it. It supplements the miniature without overwhelming it. Yeah. Uh, okay, in terms of painting it, uh, it I, I wouldn't say it's the nicest paint, miniature to paint <clears throat> or the nicest Primark to paint because even though you've got uh, large spaces to deal with, it, it is quite tense, quite dense with mm. detail. So you can't really do big, long, lang US brush strokes. Uh, you, it, you do feel like you're stuttering around a lot with it because of that runic Celtic work. And it's very difficult to manage lights and shadows with those very hard cuts in it uh the face is great to paint but overall it's not as enjoyable to paint as say uh some of the uh, I'm uh, like a mortarian for example I, I feel like i again very subjective but i enjoyed the process of painting mortarian more than i did painting russ yeah uh, have, you, have you got a chance to paint paint uh, russ at all or? <laughs> I've I've not painted this Russ. No, I've painted the 1990s uh -huh. Russ, but not, oh, but not wow. this one. So, so we, no, we, I'm not going to weigh that one. S tier, in. S tier. <laughs> yes. Where do we think uh, so where, this Russ? Where goes? do we think this? Ooh. <sighs> Again, I'm th I'm thinking more D, top of D tier slash A, bottom of A, maybe bottom of A. Let's go bottom of A. I think we're. Bottom we're overcrowding the top of D at the moment. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I think we should start pushing some of the Primarchs, especially like Perturabo, maybe but, into E. I think we just... <laughs> thin ice. Now, I think, yeah, we just sort of know what's coming, so we may be being a bit too hard. And it's worth saying on all of these, I think all of them are very good sculpts. Obviously only... Oh no, let's not let's not say about what's made it into our top if you want to know what which Primark made it into our top ten, see previous video four videos back. But they're all excellent models, or yes. all but a couple yeah. are excellent models. So even Ooh, when I'd we be say curious something about the ones deep, you really don't good. like. I'm really curious to the ones you really don't like. I've already dropped um, a spoiler for why I'm not gonna like one of them, Miles. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. So next, I've got I've put Magnus so that we could sort of talk about the okay. diorama at the same Great. time. And, and do you Great. want to do the model Great. first Great. or the diorama? Uh, let's do the model first. Okay. Okay. Oh no, no. I, I guess it's more logical to do the uh, as the bridge, right? Let's let, let, let's do the diorama. Yeah. And we're not going to put the diorama within the ranking system. It ooh, just needs I think it's a, a consideration. Time. Yeah. As a yeah, I think it's a backdrop for the two, for the two models. Yeah, like the diorama. I think he's really well done. It fra obviously frames Russ's pose, but I think the the hyper extension argument on Russ's pose when taken singular, and obviously I don't yeah. think you can get this diorama anymore. So we near can't. You can't take get it. the connected. Yeah, yeah, you can't get yeah, the connected yeah, exactly. piece. 
And, you know, again, being hypercritical, uh, the miniatures are quite far apart on, mm -hmm. on the scene because each one comes with its own scenic base, which separates it out even more. Um, I, I've seen other dioramas where they've got rid of that base entirely and put them closer together, and it works a lot better uh, as sort of like a focal point because there's a lot of like negative space in between them uh, where like a focal point should be. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think if it's a way to display your miniatures in the display case, it's great to have that display base. But as it, to critically evaluate it, I don't think it entirely works together as a, as a scene. Um, no, I, I think they're slightly non-interactive with each other as well. I think they're yeah. like Magnus being there frames Russ's hyper-extended pose, but they're not actually... Yeah. Their motions aren't interacting with each other. They're doing two completely separate things just happen to be yeah. stood near each other. And it's uh, when we come to this, it's a similar problem with the Magnus and the Fulgrim because they've sculpted them as separate entities and then they've added their own scenic bases and then they've put them together as a scene. And again, if if it works a lot better if you take the two miniatures out of the scene entirely and build your own diorama base. I think the same could be said of Russ and uh, Magnus, that the, the scenic base as it comes is a great way to display the miniatures, mm. uh, but it's not a great diorama. Right. Yeah, I, I'll agree with you on that, Liz. Let's yeah. go move on to Magnus. And we it's just Magnus. worth talking a little bit about those because they, they're they options available, even mm. if we're not going to be yeah. running through them. What to say about Magnus? I really like <sighs> Magnus as a sculpt and the, uh, what is included yeah. on the model. I really like the flesh part, like the arms, the flesh mm -hmm. parts of Magnus. I think the, like he's, what's his armor called? Like the golden garibase or oh, whatever it's called. God, it's like the armor of Fotep or something like that. Yeah, so I, uh, I really like the opportunities for painting that's on there. And whenever you see one painted, it's really nice. And that, and that starts off at the sculpting stage, I think it's come mm. from. The the details that you get in there, such as the Egyptian <laughs> dick plates, I'm going to call them. Egyptian the, dick plates, yeah. They're great. Yeah, really nice. Skyrub on the, on the breastplate. Like, all the dip, Egyptian crap on them is great. Yeah, ev even down to the, the detail on the horns, the face is... I'm just going to be saying the face is great. What what do you like about the model, Miles? And then I'll get into what I don't think works. I love all that, yes. But it's also the stance. Mm. Chest arced back. Unapologetic, unrepentant, completely magisterial. Casting a spell. Uh, he is very, uh, I guess, regal in his bearing and in yeah. his standing. Very arrogant. Like he is the master of all he pervades. He he knows no wrong. That's the essence of the character for me. How it comes across, just that's the simple posing of it. I think tells the story of the miniature. The basing again phenomenal. Contextualizes the miniature. Uh, it gives a sense of theme, story, tells you who it is in relation to to the, that point in the narrative. But again, anything you say before but, maybe you could take it with a pinch of salt. So but. This is probably one of the uh, least favorite Primarchs of mine to paint, purely because of how clustered it is with detail. Really? Now, when you try and render this in non-metallic metal, which gives you a much clearer overall outline of the miniature, because of all these details, you have to work on the reflections individually. And then when you pan out and look at it as a whole, it, it runs the risk of just looking clustered and, and indistinct and messy. You try doing this with metallic pigment and you run the same issue because the the the, the metallic pigment itself, the, the size of it, the reflect the natural reflections that gives you, you can't clearly see the outline and the curvature of all these great great details on the mm. chest. Uh, now Andy Wardle did a version of this where he just clean he just scraped it off completely. He scraped uh, uh, and he just did a, a blend over the top of it. And overall, compositionally, your eye has no, it, it, your eye had a space to relax. 
Whereas this sculpt, it has detail on the chest. It has like a very closed off face with more detail, big flowing mane of hair. And even on his cloak, he has feathers. He has all that sculpted detail on it. It's very frantic and frenetic, this sculpt. It's hard to produce a very clean, clear delineation of lines for it and then for it to work universally. Um, I So when, when I did this, uh, I, I had to start looking into like a hybrid methodology between non-metallic and true metallic. I think I called it something like HTMMMNMMM, you know, some, something ridiculous like that, hybrid true metallic metals. Yeah. Uh, where you base coat the miniature it, very loosely in non-metallic as a structure, then you overlay metallics on top of that. So you have the underlying structure of the non-metallic, but then the shine of the true metallic. Uh, and it's it's quite a difficult concept to get your head around and then to execute. Mm. So in terms of, and I would have liked to have seen the head more because it's so closed off. Like you have a little bit of the eye. Uh, oh God, and that chain hanging off the miniature with the Book of Magnus. How many times that snaps? Like whenever I take a commission, I instantly replace that with chain. Otherwise it just snaps. Like, and all about this miniature, you look at it twice, snaps. The, the, uh, uh, the halberd it has, snaps. The big ring of fire coming off it, snaps. It's a good miniature, but my God, is it exhausting and frustrating. Ugh. You've convinced me. You've convinced me. It's, yeah. I, I, not having had to paint this, mm -hmm. look at it and go, the the pose is uh -huh. overwhelmingly good. The, the detail yes. looks really nice on the yeah. resin. And like, uh -huh. painters yeah. have done a really good job with it. But I obviously uh -huh. can't take that into account. So sure. to hear that it's not, nice, it's not a good model to paint, I will defer and... And again, l let me please put this in big signposted language. This is only my opinion. It's so subjective. Like, do is this a good miniature? Does it feel nice to paint? There is no graph. There's no way I can mark. It's just a purely subjective thing. I, I have found whenever I've come to paint this miniature, it's a very difficult, fraught process that exhausts me by the end of it. <laughs> right. Where are we ranking it? Where are we ranking it? I think it has to be our first E. Really? Really? The, the painting e. of it is that bad? It the painting of it, it snaps like level. crazy. The focal are, are point... We, are we rating would... snappiness of the models? Russ's act I is mean, terrible, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a... It's a uh, what? It, it's great. For like, snapping. the detail on the head... Oh, snapping, yeah. But yeah, it's we, not like, we can't, we can't... Like, sure. snappiness of models. Sure, it, it is snappy, absolutely, but it's not as snappy as this. Between the fire, the book, his halberd. <laughs> so, new this category, is an ex exceptionally new category, snappy miniature. Yes, I know. Extreme snappiness, yes. Uh, I would suggest. <clears throat> um, oh, God. I wish I could remember the, the, the painter's name. Can we, can we pause just for a sec? Right, so next we've got Logar. And this Ooh. was done by Little Loser Studio. Oh, yeah. So that was my first incarnation. But I eventually came to the realization, being the shrewd businessman I am, that calling my business a loser wasn't probably the best of moves. So it changed over to Little Legend, you know, because I'm painting little miniatures. They kind of let it made sense at the time. Funnier, uh, though. Funnier. <laughs> little loser name, though. Yeah, Little Loser. Little yeah. Loser Studio. Yes. Anyway. Uh, so the. I, I guess this is the most iconic version of this paint job that I've done. This is the one that people seem to refer to and remember quite a lot. How um, I was able to sort of like capture the sadness in his eyes. Uh, and I, I also cheated a little bit here uh, because in the books, he's described as having golden skin over and over again. Well, I couldn't put metallic pigment on there and I wasn't strong enough with non-metallic to really do that justice and keep the script work. So that, oh, I know, I'll just illuminate his face from below. So when you saw it, an onlooker would say, oh, his face is golden. Uh, oh, so that's did, the story behind that. Like, did you take, I always took that as non-literal golden and as more, like, just tanned. Uh, so I've, I've always interpreted it as literal golden or, like, maybe he rubs his skin with some kind of, like, golden lotion. I don't know, but I've took it more literally. Right, okay. <clears throat> 
Oh, yeah, fair. Yeah. So but I suppose you could, like, Logan, paint. the sculpt. Uh, God, do you... Do you ah, whew, what to say about the sculpt? Uh, right, okay. Um, the, the, the good about it, uh, exceptionally detailed, really nice uh, face on it. Uh, I, I think it's... It's not a warrior king face. It is a face of a scholar. It's a face mm -hmm. of somebody who, in this time of the heresy, is passive and is unsure of his role. And the, I think he... So this is a weird thing to say, but I think he might have the best backpack, generator backpack, in all of heresy. I, I love really? his backpack. Yeah, I use it on a lot of conversions, like true scale stuff. Um, and I've seen a lot of people use use this uh, so if you don't like russ's backpack for example i think it's too wolfy mcwolf a lot of people have used logars instead um, well, actually, I, I didn't mention it because i thought you'd call I, I thought you'd be like what you're mentioning something like the tray again i really like vulcans yes. is so good vulcans is but, really good yeah as vulcans well. is except yeah it is exceptional um but i think with vulcans it has these little um fuel cans mm. there uh, which doesn't make it appropriate to use across the range but if you just wanted a good enlarged backpack boom Logars is the one to do yeah. uh, his mace is exceptionally well detailed uh, like the little uh, spikes hanging off there incredibly yeah. frustrating to put on the miniature but I mean, as a miniature looking at it exceptional exceptionally detailed exceptionally yeah. Uh, uh, and the the cruciform on across the entire miniature um, takes after the language of the angels developed by Alistair Crowley, which then went on to become um, the the the, the uh, language of the word bearers. Mm. I, don't, well, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. So lots of detail, lots of things that inform the character, lots of things that contextualise the miniature. Max, say nice things about this miniature. <laughs> I no, I think it is a brilliant miniature. Yeah. I think the like the mace being uh -huh. or the, just it, it exudes chaos, I think, all the time in the, mm. the glorification of chaos just across mm. the entire model. I w I wouldn't say it looks sinister, but it's almost the wrong word. It looks lo <laughs> lawful evil. It looks evil without looking sinister. Mm-hmm. Because of that priestly nature of Lorgar, that is, they sort of a juxtaposition in worshipping chaos, in that you're doing an mm. ordered thing to worship chaos. Mm. But, and I, th I, th I think that's sort of encapsulated in the model really well. I think it's a man struggling with a decision. Uh, it, Me it's or someone the on the cusp. Oh, the, the model. The model. <laughs> Rather than the description of the model. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, no, I'm not going to launch into sort of like a character. Uh, uh, thing by on you no um yeah it's, it's a character on the cusp of a decision and i think the miniatures in action speaks to that well uh I, I i like the cape it gave you that negative space so i i um i pay i freehanded the eurozone dividing chaos and and uh light mm -hmm. on the back of a bit of blake work uh the cave i really like because it it for it, it kind of locates his philosophy in a much older state. Uh, yeah. It's something a little bit more primal. With all these things said, um, I think we're grasping for stuff to talk about a little bit because oh, yeah, it's it, on it's... the. I, I don't think it's. I think it's a good sculpt. I don't think it's a, an exemplar. Primark within the range. It's... I think it's a D Primark, <sighs> yeah. and we're struggling to because we don't dislike it. Uh -huh. I think there's just nothing that elevates it. I don't think that it's an iconic representation of Lorgar. I don't think it is captures. Is there an iconic representation of Lorgar? I, I don't think there is. I don't, I don't think there is. It's hard Someone to pin down what Lorgar is. <clears throat> yeah, he's a crusader. He's a zealot. He's he's an orator. Uh, he's a philosopher. Eventually, he becomes a warrior. How do you encapsulate that in a miniature, in a scheme? <clears throat> well, it's, it's uh, easy to put like, the cultist look when it looks dirty, but you can't translate mm. that to Primark because yeah. Primarchs are these near godlike beings. 
Uh-huh. So how do you make uh, that look ragged? And it... Yeah. It's it's a good representation of an early heresy, I think. Uh, I, and it's it's not the nicest miniature to paint because of the cruciform across the, the armor. Again, it's mm. exceptionally well done. And I think if you painted it basically, like if you did this in... in I don't know, uh, like contrast paints, just very, very simply embellishing the details. You could get a lot out of the sculpt, but I, I wanted to do more with this. So I, I'd love to do a rendition where I fill in those gaps and then put my own cruciform in there or paint my own designs in there. Mm. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, what level? So overall. Snap decision, Miles. E, E. E? Yeah, let's e. go free. Let's go free. E. It would be in D if it wasn't for the mace snapping so often. No, like we can't little... have snappiness in that. Like we have going so much. Those little in... spikes. Those little spikes drive me absolutely around the wall. Oh, up, up I the can't wall. believe Not we're adding a new category, and that category has Spiky. nothing to do with it. It's snappiness because you can't hold it without snapping it. <laughs> like that should be a consideration. It, it's uh, quality of life. <laughs> it's quality of life. Snaps too easily. If, if anyone else is unhappy with this, please leave it below in the comments. <laughs> leave the dirtiest, nastiest comment you can in the comments below. Lion L. Johnson. Oh, ooh, right. You uh, say some stuff about this thing. We 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 were we foreground. So we, we, of course, like when we were setting the episode up, we were chatting a little bit before us, like. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? Like, what, what, what? You, and in passing, we'd say like, "Oh, yeah, the lion. That's a great miniature." And you're kind of like, mm, "Are you sure?" So I, I feel like this is going to be quite a lively debate. Uh, I'm a big lover of this miniature because uh, two heads, <laughs> phenomenal. Always a plus. Pick one like and a, off that. Having a helmeted version, great. Again, quality of life here. Quality of life additions. Um, it has two uh, weapon options. Great, gives with, more with Miles. Back Miles, back we're consumer. not rating the product. We pick the best head we're, and the best rating, weapon, and which one? Well, we're like... rating the miniature. We're rating oh, the kit. We, the you, kit comes with two heads. We're not rating the kit. The kit. Two... Which, if you were going facts. to, if you're going to put one into a competition, would you These pick the bare head or the, the helmet? I, I would magnetize it and let the judge decide. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> Yes, I think we've got to go I'm... with the be the best one that you think. Rating the kit, the facts of the kit as they stand, you have lots of quality of life uh, options. Yeah. You can we choose where in the heresy you can you can place this, whether he has the lion sword or whether he has uh, his, his other sword. Um, the pose is dynamic. It's in action, so it looks great on the tabletop as well as up on the display. His cloaks, oh, his clo cloak, not cloaks, plural. His cloak is one of the better cloaks in the heresy. Lots of large negative space, a little bit of fur, nice tasteful sweep to frame the miniature. Mwah, beautiful. His gun, weirdly enough, is one of the better gun sculpts. In, because they all come with gun sculpts for some reason. Like, even Angron has a little pistol. Mm. But... Um, the lion has one of the better gun sculpts of, of, of the Primarchs. So again, another little check, another little bonus. Um, and the overall sculpt, it captured that monastic knightly element to it, I think, really well. The steepled arches is a, is a theme running right the way throughout the miniature, from the chest plate to the legs. Everything has that kind of like steepled arched look to it. Um, great detail without being overly embellished. Uh, has lots of negative space, so you can do some really nice blends to it. Uh, and then looking at the scenic... Uh, okay, to uh, mark it down, I think the scenic base is a little bit busy with all those dead marines on it. Mm. I don't think it necessarily adds anything to the character. It's a nice addition, certainly, but I don't think it detracts from the miniature, but I don't think it adds to it either. I think... uh, those are my thoughts on the lion. I think what are your the thoughts? Lion is one of the most boring models that they've made oh. in the Primark. Oh. I think the knightly essence is captured by like mm -hmm. the tabard and yep. 
about that, some of the details on it. It, it, it looks mm. like a knight, right? Okay, yeah. The armour has some embellishments that aren't to the quality that I would expect off other Primark models. Ooh, okay, like They, like they feel slightly tacked on. Like what? Are you saying? Yeah, like what? Yeah, like what? Like when you when you mentioned Rush, Russ's embellishments, they're right. not to the level the level of sculpt quality. I wouldn't say as Russ's embellishments. My is is main, there anything like specific? That even just looking at the lion on his knee, I don't think the knee. Okay. quality. Oh is, right, okay. Is there like what the okay. main my main main argument with is the pose looks janky. Okay. Real janky. Like it's, mm -hmm. the cape has got good movement, but the the pose is halfway through an action, and it looks like when someone's badly posed a tactical marine, and <laughs> they're, okay. they're just like, uh, they just they just blocked it. It reminds me of the <laughs> mono pose. Oh, it reminds me of the mono pose space marines where they've got their bolter across their chest because it's just mm -hmm. like. Oh, we've or we've just slapped on the arms in this basic pose that the sculptor's you know, come up with at last that, minute. His pose does remind me. His legs look a bit like the RTB01, like l low sort of squat. Yeah, this is what well, this, this is what I was saying about the uh -huh. like the wide samurai pose marines before. Okay. And to me, it's it's that all over, but to an extent that really really detracts from the model for me like he's, he, there's not there's no sense of purpose about it for me mid like obviously okay. we know that he's in a swing or mm -hmm. maybe he's drawing back for a swing we don't have a sense of exactly what that model is doing because he's halfway through it because he could be doing either rather than being okay. a, an extension say like ferris where he's like at the end of of the baseball swing and we mm -hmm. know exactly yeah. what has just happened there mm -hmm. here it's sort of like mm, is the best description i think the the chain sword option i don't know whether that's that's the lion sword or the other one mm -hmm. i think is a bit boring as i remember it hasn't got yep. much detail on there or addition to just a normal chain sword mm -hmm. And the, the, even the Iron Halo, it's just like they've pulled it off a, a Praetor or off a, a plastic kit, a Space Marine Captain, scaled I up a bit. Have, have another look at it, because there are jewels embellished in it. Uh, I think you're doing a little bit of a disservice there. Wait, what do you mean the jewel, jewels embellished in it? They just look like studs. Uh, Is that what you in... mean? Oh, it is studs, yeah. Perhaps yeah. I'm, I'm bigging it up more but than I remember. Like, it, if if yeah. if something is able to be painted in two ways, that's a good thing. Mm. But I could make that argument say on well, say on Perturabos inner leg plates, they could mm. all be jewels if I wanted them to be because I could just paint them as. And yeah. that's, do you know that's that true. that's just a positive about any painted model? But mm. yeah, I, I, like, and I don't want to abs like just to just hammer on it without because I'll be saying the same thing. But I think the extent of the flaw within the model of the pose mm. is to an extent that it really kills it for me. Mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thoughts I hadn't considered. Yes. Ooh. Right. So overall, <laughs> where have we put this? E. Cer certainly non S. Definitely non E. Uh, I would, I, again, I put this lower A. So we go D then. How many do we have in D at the moment? <laughs> Too many. Yeah. We've got we need... at the moment. We've got oh we've got no, we've got two in each, so we could go D. And then that's three okay. in D, two in E, two in A. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Th this isn't a hill I'm willing to die on for this miniature. But I, that, there's there's a few that like that. It's like like do I really die on the hill of yeah. Perturabo or Magnus's pose or like, because yeah. we can have a reshuffle at the end. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I, so the more we get into this, the longer we talk, the more Vulcan is pushing its way up to S for me. You think? Yeah, 
yeah, the longer we talk, the more this the the, the Vulcan I'm is, definitely is happy pushing to stuff up there slayer. That. I'm yeah. definitely happy to discuss we'll do that. that. I'd like I'd like to see how many end up in S as definite S's yeah. before. So we just got I think we just go through either one or two more uh-huh. and then we'll okay. call it for today. Uh, oh okay, yeah. Yeah, because I'm running yeah. out of time. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay. Comrade Curse. Comrade Curse. And if anyone's oh, noticed we're going God. in reverse alphabetical order, I think. As, yes. As it's just been well, randomly we, allocated. We, we we just didn't want to go from like one to twenty. Yeah, you know, we wanted to mix yeah. it up slightly. Well, the names Conrad are random. Comrade so. yeah. My God. Okay. I mean, I've taken the lead on the last one. You 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 go with this. You go, Mister Kurz. <laughs> I'm going to make the statement of this is one of my favorite Primark models. Okay. I think it exudes everything that Comrade Kurz is meant to be in the novels, like complete mm. psychopath, fast moving, dynamic pose. It's it's at the sort of like point of like consideration before a leap. And I think that's or to me that's what this portrays. It's obviously okay. not an action pose. I know he's one of the more dynamic Primarchs, but it's almost conveyed by the extreme angle that the legs are in that is one of the dynamic uh-huh. prime. Like I don't think every dynamic model needs to be like flying through the air to mm. convey that. I think the armor has a lot of like gothic inspiration that portrays the night lords obviously really well with how they look within the books. The armor looks light and elegant whilst also having that like sort of gothic ar- arcade ar- 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 arcanism 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 I'm going to go with arcanism. Yeah, it's arcanism shop. Sure. The face when I painted the face and it's actually it's only the face that I've painted on this was a bit weird. it's one of the older Primark models and look it was a bit squished though i en- i enjoyed yeah. the paint because it looked haunted and mm-hmm. as i i enjoyed the <clears throat> the painting process and the head because it looked a bit haunted but whether or not it's the highest quality head it does convey what he's trying to convey but whether the it would convey that even more or just look better if it was sculpted again now i'd be willing to admit but i i think this is one of the better primarchs the cloak is brilliant with all the little cards on and the base of bone the bit yeah the base like adding to it it's gone miles that give haunted, us it save me from haunt- saying the same thing over and over again yeah that like haunted gothic-esque broken arc arch of a, of a base the dead bodies on the base like flayed skin uh that if if, if you're um I don't want to say like if you're clever enough because that that sounds condescending, (laughs) but a nice little detail that you could bring onto the miniature is that the the flayed base is on the back of his cloak. Mm. You can make one look fresh. So for the rest of them, you can make look pallid and drained of blood uh, and quite uh, old and desiccated, almost leathery. Whereas you could do like a couple of pinker, fresher faces covered in blood as if he's just skinned them. Mm. Um, Do you have to say, Mercy and forgiveness, they snap like crazy. That drives me up the wall. I'm not I am not oh. marking down Kurz for snappiness of mercy and forgiveness though. It's not as bad <clears throat> as the other Primarchs, but I do have to uh and and the amount of times I've lost them on the carpet, I think it, oh fuck. Uh, oh no 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 I gotta find them, I gotta find them. Yeah, a little bit of a panic. Uh, yeah, the face I do agree with, uh, and the the tragedy is that the way you pose the miniature on on the base, his head's kind of looking down. So what little face that you can see, just painting normally, is kind of obscured because of how mm. you place it looking down. Uh, but he does have this really cruel, wicked smile to him. It's there's something so unhealthy about that face. The detail on, on, on the miniature is crazy. I don't understand how somebody could see those details, let alone be able to like sculpt them. So you have the lightning tower on the side of his yeah. leg. You have the uh, like death and, and like the representations of the tarot cards. Uh, the cards strewn across the bases. Uh, in terms of a representation of a Primark, yeah, I think this is well up there. Mm. Uh, to be completely, uh, to, 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 to nitpick a little bit, I don't think the cloak sits as nicely as it could 
on the miniature because they again it has that kind of like up and down quality it doesn't like flow in the bends around the miniature it, it's quite straight i guess you could because it is quite a thin cloak i guess you could you could cure that by mm. like heating it up with like a heat gun or uh, and then bending it to to um is that something that on the the casts that you've got of it mm. have had that problem or would you say that because we have to be judging these on a, what the sculptor has done with it I, I think it's what the, rather than i think it is what the sculptor has right, done okay, so it's just, just to make problem, it not a, yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, just with you saying them, it could be heat bent out so that that means it could yeah. have been just come a bit dis like, no no on. i i've worked on i've worked on multiple versions and they're all the same right uh right. it's it's just a straight up and up, but <clears> it's that impossible proj uh problem of you have a you have a cloak that needs to be reproduced needs to be cast uh, if it if it does have all those folds, the way I'm imagining how it should sit on the miniature, perhaps you can't cast that. So you, you do run into an issue of manufacture at that point, and you, you need to take that into consideration. Mm. Uh, are again, we, are we adding non-tangible elements? Since you're adding snappiness, can I add non-tangible? Non-tangible, yeah, sure, why not? Like those little X factor things. Uh, paintability, uh, again, it's not the nicest paint, uh, Primark 2 paint, but by no means is it, is it the like worst. You do have lots of really nice negative spaces. You have the flayed flesh, you have the base, you have the sickly skin. Uh, the, the cloak, it has some really nice detail on it, like those flayed faces, and then you have the Nostroman runes a lot along the base. Mm. Yeah, this uh, is, I know I've said about Vulcan's cloak being mm -hmm. the best, if not one of the best clothes. Mm. For night lords, mm -hmm. the cloak is amazing. I've used it on a couple mm. of praetors that I've made. Yeah, like it's it's, it, it's incredible good. cloak. As they even if it is straight up and down on this particular yeah. model, like bending it is really nice. And e even small little details like his outstretched hands are clawed, like they they sharpened at the edges. Uh, Do you want to go God. first on me? A, solid A. I want to put it S. Oh. Yeah, I think Kurz in portraying his character is one of the best prime marks they've done, even with the downside that I said of the face. Even, even with I, I the cloak. I think it would be so harsh to knock it down purely because the the you know, snappiness it has this kind of like to, to, this, yeah, yeah, the, the Toby Maguire esque sort of like <laughs> half yeah. thing going on, half half fringe going on. So you uh, knock it down on base on hairstyle. <laughs> no, no, I, again, like I can't really do that because that would be so harsh to do that. Um, I'm happy to place an S for now Ooh. until maybe another worthy c contender comes along to maybe knock it off its perch. But yeah, I'm happy to put an S. Yeah, 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 and we'll just review as we go along. Now, just to boil it down, it's a it's a great sculpt, a, a great face, um, a, a base that contextualizes it. Uh, it's it's all around a good solid sculpt, uh, and that's a good representation of Conrad Kerr's. Awesome. So we have our yeah. first top spot. First secure S. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that is actually all we've got time for today. Part one concluded. Part one. Right. Yeah. How do you feel about this discussion so far? I'm feeling a little bit queasy putting Conrad Kurz in S. Already? Already? You could have yeah. just pushed that out. I'm already starting to feel like I'm re regretting that. It can get but, knocked I down. Mean, We're going to end up with, like, what, we got five some Primarchs strong in contenders. Because that's, that's what you've got really... to think. We're yeah. going to end up with five Primarchs in each tier. Like, I know one definitely got an E. Like, one bottom of the pile. Absolutely, a million percent, you are bot... Like, there's nothing you can do to convince me to get him out of S, uh, well, out, I, out of the E tier. I know one, but I'm not sure whether it will be the same. And I know one that's definitely going to be an S tier. Like, it, 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 it's secure, the, 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 the crown is on his head. Possibly one of the best sculpts in, in the range. So I know, and I'm trying to locate everything between those two points, between the S... Between this S tier miniature and the E tier miniature. I'm trying to navigate my way around the Primark range like that. Uh, but if you'd like to know what those Primarchs are, you'll have to tune in for episode two of this two-part series. Yeah. Can I just ask, 
we put mm. one of the Primarchs in our top ten list ever, and we've not gone through that Primarch yet. No. Are we bound to putting that Primarch in S tier? Because logic I, I should... Think... Or are we hypocrites? Are we... Because I never said I wasn't a hypocrite, Miles. Yeah, same. I, I'm trying to justify it here with, with a quote. I mean, within each man is a certain level of, uh, of being a hypocrite. Yes, certainly. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. We'll, we'll see When we come time. to it, we'll discuss it, yeah. yeah. As one of the top majors, and then it doesn't get into S tier. What the hell? <laughs> nice, consistent opinion, bro. Yeah, right. Unsubscribe. Well, that is Hobby Hammer issue 17. 18, 19? 17, 18, 19, somewhere around yeah. that region. And we'll catch everyone next time for the yeah. conclusion okay, please, of the Primark. Please unsubscribe if you don't like our opinions. <laughs> but, I mean, Hit the unsubscribe button, channel. knock off that bell button, <laughs> and send us a bad review. Send, send this video to all your friends. Send, like, Leave you know, as many angry guys. comments as possible. Yeah, um, angry emojis. Yeah, yeah. The spelling exactly. is hard. Right. See you in a bit.